UTRGV has moved a step forward as it sets open its doors this fall. As we speak, thousands of spring breakers are headed to South Padre Island. Find out what the city is doing to prepare. It's winner go home time for the UTPA men's and women's basketball teams. Will they be advancing in the WAC tournament? Wildlife officials bring awareness to an endangered species right here in the valley. Plus weather and more, Bronx TV News starts now. Hello and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Bronx TV News. Today is Friday, March 13th. I'm Javi Guerrero. And I'm Jennifer Galindo. At the top of our broadcast, the new UT RGB Medical School has taken a big step forward. That's right, Jenny. It was recently approved by the, the, by the Medical School Education Committee to begin the process towards accreditation. Bronx TV's Fernanda Talavera has the story. UTRGB has taken its first steps to receive accreditation for the newly planned medical school. As of last week, the Laysan Committee on Medical Education approved the school's candidacy. Accreditation is important for schools so that we're recognized alongside every other medical school in the Valley. We are going to be the newest medical school in Texas, so it's good that we're having a head start, we're accredited, and we are ready to be able to compete with the other schools. The accreditation means that students can now transfer in and out of the new medical school, making their credits and the school's curriculum recognized nationwide. This is a large task that the new dean of the medical school, Dr. Francisco Fernandez, knows much about. It's an essential process, I think, in order to be able to uh, assure that, that you will have uh, right or dutifully complied with the requirements uh, to make sure that uh, you meet the national standards of highest quality for medical practice. UTRGB has taken its first step to receive accreditation for the newly planned medical school. And as of last week, the Laysan Committee on Medical Education approved the school's candidacy. Well, I'm actually part of the process. So I'm really excited to see them moving forward. Um, obviously, we're still waiting on the uh, Laysan Committee on Medical Education to make its ultimate decisions. Um, and there's still a lot of little hoops to jump through. It's, it's a long, arduous process. The move marks the first step into the new era for UTRGB, one that will affect not only the class of 2015, but many generations to come. The school can now draft a charter class. However, no application requirements have been released. Up until the announcement, only talk of the potential of the new building could be dreamed of. Now, it can be a reality. The UTRGB School of Medicine is scheduled to open its door to students next fall. For Bronx TV, I am Fernanda Talavera. The American dream is at a halt for undocumented immigrants. Bronx TV's Orlando Vargas is live in the studio with the latest on the legislation. Well, that's right, Jenny. In my hand, I'm holding a 50-page injunction set forth by U.S. federal judge Andrew Hainan on February 16th. Now, these documents are what's halting President Barack Obama's executive order for at least one more week. Now, federal judge Andrew Hainan said in a one-page order that the court will not rule on any pending motions until a court hearing on March 19th where government attorneys will have to explain a filing that said some 100,000 people had been given three-year periods of deferred action prior to the judge's injunction. Hainan ruled that, quote, the administration had not followed required procedures for changing federal rules, unquote, and ordered the deferred action program. The Justice Department has already filed an emergency motion with the Court of Appeals. Well, we wanted to find out exactly how many undocumented immigrants live here in the Rio Grande Valley alone. We started crunching the numbers, and we found out that 88,000 undocumented immigrants live in Hidalgo County, and 46,000 live in Cameron County. You can count on us to keep you updated on this immigration issue as it continues through the court system. In the studio, Orlando Vargas, Bronx TV News. Residents and employees at South Padre Island are preparing for a busy spring break this season. You know, Javi, South Padre is hosting several concerts and events, but local police and city officials are doing their best to keep those having fun safe. Bronx TV's Ivan Herrera has the story. Public safety is the number one concern for us. 
Residents and employees at South Padre Island are preparing for the busy spring break season. Up at the north end, we've got Clayton's. It's got a full lineup for spring break. They're having daily beach bashes. The city has been preparing in advance to welcome thousands of tourists. They've also hired new employees to ensure the safety of its visitors and residents. There will be increased numbers in our police force as well as other departments. All in all, we hired 91 employees for this uh, busy season, spring break. City officials recommend that residents be aware of delays on roads. Go to the grocery store, take care of your errands. You, there is going to be increased wait times on the bridge. The United States Coast Guard is also making an effort to ensure that spring breakers are safe by patrolling our waterways. It's encouraged for everybody that's on board a boat or jet ski to have a life jacket on. They encourage boaters to use safe practices when out in the water. Make a plan. It, write it down if you have to, and then share that plan. Don't keep it to yourself. Some island residents are staying in their homes to avoid the crowds. I mean, if I could at all just do something at home, just avoid the whole spring break scene altogether. And they're exercising caution when out on the streets during this week. If I am for some reason out, you know, doing something non-spring break um, activity related, I would just be extra careful to maybe not drive so close to cars. The city of South Padre Island is expecting anywhere from 50,000 to 125,000 people and has taken extra precautionary steps to ensure the safety of its visitors and residents. Two triage tents will be set up in the, on the north and south ends of the island for any basic medical care that visitors may need. The city will also have a mobile medical unit with the ability to carry up to 18 patients if needed. Reporting in the studio, Ivan Herrera, Bronx TV News. Both men's and women's basketball teams went all in in this year's WAC tournament. The jackpot, a spot in the NCAA March Madness tournament. Bronx TV's Vanessa Mares has the story. Game winner! That winning bucket by senior Shaq Boga catapulted the men's basketball team into the WAC tournament. The Bronx finished the regular season just 4-10 and 10 in the WAC, but the tournament gives them a fresh start excited about it because uh, the season hasn't went how we wanted it to go, but the tournament is like a new beginning because records don't matter, stats don't matter. We just got to find a way to get a win and keep winning to win the championship. The win or go home setup doesn't mean the Bronx will deviate from the game plan. You know, we try to find ways to play to Boga and Gennari a lot and, uh, and Dan Kamasa. Uh, and Shaq Hines. Those four guys have been our dominant players and scorers, so we try to play through them as much as possible, mostly, of course, through Gennari first. Junior Everett Osborne finished the regular season with a hot hand from beyond the arc, and he hopes that carries over into tournament play. I just to be an impact player, impact the team any way possible that I can, whether they need me to score, defend, come off the bench, whatever it is, just help this team get a W. Every college basketball player wants what the Bronx have, a chance to punch their ticket to the big dance. For Bronx TV, I'm Vanessa Matis. The men's team jumped to a big lead early on, but couldn't hang on and fell to the second seeded Kangaroos 70-61 to on Thursday in the Orleans Arena. Senior Shaquille Boga led the team with 14 points and 5 assists. The women's team, though, is still alive as they use the second half to, be the, to beat the sixth seeded Kansas City Kangaroos 61-50 to Wednesday night. Senior Brittany Bush led the Bronx with 17 points and 7 rebounds. The Lady Bronx will now face Bakerfield Friday at 4.30 at the WAC Tournament semifinals. Less than 50 known ocelots can be found here in the United States, with the majority right here in the South Texas area. The Wildcats have made their way into the U.S.'s endangered species list, but efforts have been made to save this cat before it's too late. Once a flourishing breed in the state of Texas, <laughs> One endangered species is on the brink of extinction. The ocelot population has seen a decrease over the course of the last few decades. There is only 13 of them we, that we know about at the refuge, so they're very rare. In an effort to educate Valley residents about the importance of conserving the ocelot population, the CAT Ambassador Program was created. It's really worth it to spread awareness about ocelots and conservation so that people here know they've got this amazing treasure right in their backyard. 
Through this, individuals throughout the country have the opportunity to experience a live ocelot. It's one thing to talk about how amazing these cats are, but I tell you, when you see it in person, it's like, it, it really gets you. Conceived from a frozen embryo, 14-year-old Sahil from the Cincinnati Zoo has spent the last eight years traveling alongside zoo trainers to educate the public about the importance of ocelot conservation. In order to raise awareness for the decreasing ocelot population, members of the wildlife community joined together to create Ocelot Conservation Day, which started at UTPA and ended here at the Gladys Porter Zoo in Brownsville. The platform was to bring awareness to the public by having experts from across the valley discuss the significance of the endangered creature and its habitat. The biggest part of the you know, ocelot conservation is to get the large ranches, the public, TxDOT, local county governments all on the same page that we think this population is important. With more than 1,300 people in attendance, Audience members had the opportunity to engage in lectures. Each one has a unique pattern on their coat. And participate in a day full of activities, such as talking to wildlife officials and planting seeds in an effort to restore the thorn scrub habitat from which they depend on. The RGV has what we call Tamalip and thorn scrub, and that is some of the ocelot's favorite habitat. The decreasing ocelot population is a result of declining genetic diversity and roadway deaths animal tries to cross the road and even though that they could jump over that concrete barrier, mm -hmm. since they can't see past it, they don't realize what's on the other side. Although the number of ocelots is declining and experts in the wildlife community see a tough road ahead for the wildcat, some believe change can begin in the Rio Grande Valley. Approximately 40 percent of ocelot deaths are contributed to motor vehicles speeding through their natural habitat. If you spot an ocelot or any wildcat resembling one, Laguna Atascosa Wildlife Refuge suggests that you contact them immediately. The weather is finally starting to clear up and it's just in time for the spring break season. Here's Sergio Puente at your Bronx TV Weather Center with your seven day weather forecast. Good afternoon, thank you for tuning in to Bronx TV Weather. I'm Sergio Puente. Let's, look at, look, let's take a look at current conditions right now. We're looking at mostly cloudy skies with winds out of the east northeast at about Five miles per hour, humidity levels around 50 percent, 73 degrees is your valley average temperature right now. Overnight tonight, we do expect temperatures 57 in Rio Grande City. That looks uh, mostly cloudy conditions pretty much across the entire Rio Grande Valley. Temperatures 58 in Edinburgh, 58 in McAllen. We do expect temperatures back up into 59 degrees in South Padre Island with about a 20 percent chance of showers um, in, the, in the region. For tomorrow afternoon, we do expect temperatures in the upper Rio Grande Valley to be around 74, 75 degrees, Edinburgh, McAllen, and Rio Grande City. Well, as we look at the uh, South Padre Island area, we do see temperatures a little bit cooler over there, 70 degrees, with mostly cloudy conditions for tomorrow. Our drought monitor, we do see the drought conditions pretty much progressing across the entire region, the South Texas region. We do see the North Texas is doing pretty, pretty bad this, this time of year for that drought monitor with exceptional drought conditions there. Our almanac and record show record high was 99 degrees that was set in 2005. Uh, that wasn't too long ago there, and we, do not, we don't expect any of that to reach uh, 90, 99 degrees anytime soon here in the Rio Grande Valley. 31 degrees is our record low. That was set in 1951. Our sunrise will be at 7.45 a.m., and our sunset will be at 7.41 p.m. Our 70 forecast, we're looking at seven days. Uh, the next two or three days, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we do expect temperatures mostly cloudy with about a 20% chance of showers. 73 degrees is our forecasted high for Saturday and Sunday with temperatures right along 56 for our lows. By Monday, we do expect temperatures back up to uh, around 75 degrees pretty much for the remainder of the next seven day uh, period. We do see clearing conditions back on Thursday and Friday for those spring breakers out there at South Padre Island. You have some nice weather for the end of the week. That was a look at your Bronx TV weather forecast back to you in the studio. Before the transition to UTRGV this fall, UTPA Athletics is honoring one of its legendary coaches. Bronx TV's Anais Cortez tells us more about the baseball stadium's newest addition. We've done more than anybody could have for Pan Am Baseball. Former Bronx player talks fondly about Hall of Fame coach Al Ogletree, who was honored as this year's UTPA presidential pillar. Well, let me start by saying that he deserves that and, uh, and a lot more. It's amazing. You, know, it's, uh, you win 1,200 games, that's, that's a lot of baseball. Yeah. Actually, he put Pan Am on the map. I mean, you just don't go to the World Series just by accident, you know. I'm honored to, to be a friend of his, really.
The story to Coach Al is probably most famous for UTPA's 1971 World Series appearance, but he prefers to deflect the praise for his players. It's, it's surprising. The kids, the, the boys got me here. They played so well. It's really something. This is really, I didn't think anything like this would happen. I enjoyed every minute of it. In honor of Coach Al's Bronx legacy, he and his late wife, Joanne, will be forever remembered in the new Coach Al and Joanne Ogletree Entry Plaza. Ogletree is honored but caught up in the emotion of the event. Well, I wish my wife was here. That's what makes it tough. Reporting for Bronx TV, I am Anais Cortez. So, Javi, mid-semester is finally here, and spring break is just around the corner. That's right, Jenny. Dan, Dan Galvan, and Kyle Castillo took the streets to find out what students will be doing this spring break on this week's edition of Dan on the Street. All right, what's up? I'm Daniel Galvan. And I'm Kyle Castillo. And we went on campus to do what, Kyle? Ask uh, students what they're going to do and their plans for spring break. Because we want to know. We want to follow them. Not really, but we did ask them about spring break, and... Uh, Here's what they said. What are your plans for spring break? Are you going to go to the beach, um, go out of state, upstate, anywhere? Uh, I plan to go upstate, probably visit some family. Uh, for the most part, I have a Build-A-Bear at home that I want to cuddle with, So that's and Netflix too, so that's about it. Well, uh, this spring break, it's not really looking too great. I mean, I'm going to work all week, and then the weekend I'm going to go to Anison and have you know some parties and fun. I'm going to Louisiana to visit plantations with my family. So, what are your plans for this spring break? Like, you know, out of state, upstate, or to the beach? I think I'm just gonna stay at home. I'm planning on just chilling out with a few friends, not waking up early in the morning, just enjoying not being at school. I plan to catch up on a lot of my homework so I can be ready to come back. And you're gonna study during spring break? Like, that's what you're gonna do? Yeah, I'm gonna study, but from the comfort of my home. So that's that's spring break to me. Any, you got any tips for anyone that's going to the island or any beach? You know, just use protection and uh, like sun protection and sunblock, and uh, you know, just don't get burned in any places. What's the one thing that you did during any spring break that you do not want your parents finding out? <laughs> oh my God! Um, uh, geez, I got like a I got a speeding ticket, and it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't fun. It was I had to pay it though, but I did, and I took my mom's, my mom's wallet, and I paid for it with my mom's with my mom's cash. Ooh. Please don't show this on TV. <laughs> we won't. I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> I'm sorry. So yeah, we heard a bunch of interesting plans this coming spring break. What about you, Dan? You got any plans? I wish I did. Uh, I would like to have plans. It's just no one wants to have plans uh, with me. Yeah, I'm probably gonna do the same thing I always do every spring break. Just stay in bed, watch Netflix. It's incredibly sad. And with that being said, reporting for Bronx TV, I'm Daniel Gavon. Now I'm Kyle Castillo. Have fun, guys. No, you shouldn't. We want to thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Bronx TV News. If you have a story idea, go ahead and let us know. You can do so by visiting our Facebook page at facebook.com slash TV radio or our Bronx TV page at utpa.edu slash brtv. You can also check us out on Twitter at Bronx Radio TV. Use the hashtag story idea to let us know of any stories you would like us to cover. For Bronx TV, I am Javi Guerrero. And I'm Jennifer Galindo. Until next time.